So, as I was saying, when Paulus van Viana died in 1613, the Silversmiths Guild of Amsterdam commissioned his brother, Adam van Viana, to make this memorial silver jug. It's wonderful to see how modern this jug really looks. It could almost have been made in, well, around 1900. It looks like an Art Nouveau jug. All the scrolls and curves, the auricular ornamentation, that's what it's called because it's earlob-like, all flows so smoothly. With this jug, Adam van Viana takes his auricular style to the extreme. It's in fact a large three-dimensional ornamentation and again made from one single piece of silver. At the top sits a woman, you see, her back curved as she leans forward, I think she's weeping, and her hair hanging down over her head, forming the handle. The tips of her hair rest on top of what looks like a dragon's head, I think, and at the bottom you see a little monkey who's carrying this huge jug on his shoulders. You'd never think this jug was from the 17th century. It looks so incredibly modern. Okay, let's now move on to the next gallery, the one with the earthenware. And I would ask you to walk right through to the end because between those two cabinets are two huge tulip vases. At least, <laughs> that's what I used to call them. But they're not, in fact. They're simply flower vases. Anyway, I'll see you over there. Yes, I used to call these magnificent vases tulip vases. But in fact, they're vases for any kind of flower, not just tulips. Flower holders like these are far too expensive and valuable to leave them standing empty for most of the year and just put in a tulip now and then. If it wasn't tulip season, they simply put other flowers in it. And this showy vase had clearly been used. Because if you look closely, you can see it's, it's chipped everywhere and that it was broken at some point. The vases are stacked to form an obelisk. Obelisks were ancient Egyptian memorials to the pharaohs and were symbols of power, which is what these vases are inspired by. And not only were these vases extremely expensive, the flowers themselves were also very, very costly. There was a flower market in Amsterdam, apparently, maybe in the same place as it is still today, and that's where the rich used to go and buy their flowers. Flowers cost a great deal of money, and tulips cost the most, which explains what's become to be called the tulip mania of the 1630s. Tulip bulbs went for astronomical prices in those days, and then when the market collapsed, a large number of people went bankrupt. This gallery contains some real treasures of Delft earthenware. They started making blue faience in Delft to imitate the Chinese porcelain that was brought over to the Netherlands by the East India Company. And Chinese porcelain was in great demand, and the demand far exceeded supply, which is why they began to make it in Delft. Let's retrace our steps for a moment towards that wonderful painting over there by the Hondekoeter, you see, with the birds. And on the right you see one of the rarest objects here, a violin. But you couldn't play on it, of course, because it's earthenware and there's some ivory on it as well. Isn't it a strange object? Why would anyone want to have a violin made in earthenware? Well, to hang it on the wall, no doubt, and to show how rich you were. Let's walk on a bit. And here on the right, we see one of my favorite objects. A little bird cage. What a wonderful little thing. It's probably commissioned by someone. And it was used, as you may be able to see if you stand on your tiptoes for a moment. You'll see that the side and the inside are slightly damaged, where the bird pecked at the earthenware, perhaps, and it's slightly chipped in places. But I must say, this is one of the most desirable objects in this room. I could quite happily take it with me home. <laughs> well, we're now going to leave this room with all the earthenware and continue our tour upstairs, through the beautiful blue corridor and up the stairs. And I'll see you by the wonderful paintings.